And joining us now is Joel Griffith, Research Fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Joel, welcome back. Great to see you. Uh, big news today, and it is not good. As Owen mentioned, inflation is now at a 30-year high. This, as we had been hearing, that inflation that we were seeing was just transitory. Your thoughts? Well, thanks for having me, Tracy. And we are beginning to see that uh, transitory is not the word to describe what families are feeling right now. We've had year-over-year -year growth in prices at a level that we have not seen since 1990. Uh, many of our friends, many of you viewers probably were not even born in 1990. That's how severe this problem is. You're talking about rental costs increasing double digit. It's if you're in California to fill up your minivan can cost up to $150. And even Thanksgiving day dinners, if you can find a turkey, uh, those dinners are gonna be about 8% pricier than they were one year ago. This is a very serious problem and it's almost laughable when you hear President Biden say he recognizes the problem, he wants to combat it, because his policies are contributing to this spike in prices. Yeah, and I was going to say, you know, he did say that today, that reversing this trend now is a top priority for him. That said, really, Joel, what can he do now to turn things around, and what do you think should happen? Well, over this past year and a half, government has exacerbated this rise in prices. Look, even look at the supply chain issue. A lot of us are struggling to find the items that we want on the grocery shelves. Well, what led to that problem? It's not because we're importing massive amounts more of goods or we're transporting massive amounts more. We have seen California, for instance, impose uh, draconian restrictions, social distancing restrictions, COVID restrictions. We have a vaccine mandate. All of these things are actually making it difficult for people in the transit industry. And then you compound that with stricter environmental regulations that get passed down this year in California that are making it very difficult for a lot of truckers to actually operate the rigs. And then you have President Biden's policy of paying people not to work. Many people are able to earn more off the job than on the job, even in, still in places like California. And that has suppressed the amount of labor that's available to actually work in the shipping industry. And then on top of that, and this is very important, you have our central bank that is printing trillions of dollars buying up government debt, buying up government assets, those new dollars are finding their way into the economy and that is also causing prices to surge. So what can they do? Well, the government needs to tamper down on the spending, the central bank needs to stop printing all of this money and we need to stop incentivizing people to not work. Yeah, another thing uh, I want to bring up is the Federal Reserve actually issued a press release uh, saying it's going to try to counter inflation by reducing its monthly bond purchases by about $15 billion a month. In layman's terms, what does that mean, Joel, and how will that help us? You know, well, over the past year and a half, we have had our central bank digitally print trillions of dollars. And when they print that digitally, they go ahead and they buy things with it. They buy government debt, which then gets spent. They have bought corporate bonds. Of course, if an investor has their bond purchased with them, now they have money to spend. And they either spend it or they invest it or they put it on deposit at a bank, which then lends out those resources. All of that results in our money supply increasing. It's why Milton Friedman once said years ago, uh, inflation is everywhere and always a monetary phenomenon, meaning that when you have more dollars chasing relatively the same amount of goods and services, you have prices increasing. So I'm glad to hear the Federal Reserve is suddenly concerned about this, but they're a big part of the problem and the prices of uh, housing, especially increasing. Joe, before I let you go, I want to kind of uh, take a different turn here a little bit. I quickly want to talk about President Biden's uh, controversial pick for the controller of currency at the Treasury Department. Uh, I believe her name is Saul Amarava. She's currently a professor right now at Cornell University, but she graduated from Moscow State University. And I understand she did her thesis on Marxism. What more do we know about her and also her chances of being confirmed? Well, President Biden's nominee for control over the currency appears to have absorbed a lot of Marxism into her belief system. And it's evident by what she's touted. She wants the Federal Reserve, at least in the past, she wanted our central bank to actually begin taking consumer deposits, which would take the power of lending away from our private sector and put it into the hands of Washington, D.C. She has uh, bragged about her desire to ultimately see a lot of smaller manufacturing or coal producing concerns go out of business. And you know, our country is a wonderful place. We've had a lot of people come here from communist countries like Vietnam or like Cuba that love this country and love our economic system of freedom. Unfortunately, 
his nominee coming from the former Soviet Union appears to support Soviet economic policy herself. This is unacceptable. Yeah, it is concerning. Well, Joel, thank you so much for your analysis. Always great to have you on. Thanks for having me.